what can we target here in that P times R equals S that we have some control over? Do we have control over the physical pain or the emotional pain or whatever it is that we're feeling? Well, some people may say yes, but most most of the times we don't. If you're feeling pain in your back, for example, it's not that you can just say, I don't want to feel pain in my back anymore, so therefore I'm not going to feel pain, right? There are some nifty kind of mental techniques you can do to get away to avoid that pain, which would not be considered mindfulness. Um, but in general, we, we, we can't always control our experience. But can we control? the resistance to our experience? Can we control how we react or respond to our experience? That's really what Shinzen Young talks about. That's why I love this um, equation because it's all about our resistance. It's not about the pain. It's all about the resistance, right? So let's say we target our resistance and we practice over time disidentification we, uh, from those sensations, which means we're practicing non-reactivity. We're practicing non-judgment. We're not adding that layer of, ah, oh, this sucks, right? Um, or any other slew of thoughts or experiences that can come up. And let's say that same level of pain is there, but your resistance level is on a scale of one to 10, two, you've done a good job, maybe you're practicing for a number of months, whatever it is, that means your suffering index on a scale from one to 100 would only be 14, right? And if you know anything about math, you know that anything times zero is zero. So the idea being, if you can get your resistance down to zero, then your suffering, your ultimate suffering will be down to zero as well. Now, the key here is, I hope I'm not losing you in this one, um, because the most important point of this, it took me a little while to learn this, and I I came across this equation from Shinzen Young after many retreats that I had been on and living through this personally and meditating for hours on end. But the key here is that even when you see that suffering is zero, there's still a pain on a scale of one to 10 of a seven. So there's still pain there. It just means the, the, the suffering in the index means that that added layer of suffering that I contribute to through myself, through my own mind, through my own added layers to it is not there, right? So it doesn't mean there's an absence of pain. It's not as though we're feeling some blissful state of uh, body consciousness that absolves pain. The pain is still there. It's still very real because uh, pain plays a very critical role in our bodies, right? Um, it's just that we don't feel the same amount of discontent and suffering over it, right? It's still there to tell you like, hey, maybe you should move your knee, maybe you should move your back because things are getting really tight and that may not be a good look over time, right? So anyways, I just wanted to share this as kind of like a part two to the, to the conceptual map. If you remember, um, I'll just go back to it real quick. Let me get there and almost there. Here we are. Uh, if you remember this conceptual map, right, we're going from uh, gross level, large level awareness of sensations to subtle level awareness of sensations to equanimity of sensations. So it's really in the equanimity of the sensations or, or practicing that balance and that non-reactivity is where we're learning to minimize that R in the uh, P times R equals S equation down from the from the 7 to the 2 to the 0. Now that may take a lot of time and that's okay, but that's part of what this, this practice is.